Hi there, and thank you for joining us. Today I thought I'd take a look at uh, a wine called Aleste, which is a Barolo, um, and this was made by Luciano Sandrone. It's a 2017 vintage. And I, I want to try this because uh, Luciano passed away, unfortunately, on the uh, uh, 5th of January 2023, um, and was a huge loss to the, the Barolo and the Lange area because he was, he was a talented and influential winemaker. Um, Quite unusually for the for the region, uh, Luciano didn't come from a winemaking family. His his family had traditionally been carpenters, so it was a, a, an apprenticeship as a young man with another winery that gave him a love for the wines of Nebbiolo and a desire to to make his own wine. Um, so it was quite an achievement to buy uh, the the um, the vineyard that this originates from. Um, he bought a, a half a hectare portion of Canubi Boscus, um, which is. Uh, the the Canubi site um, is is really very famous in in Barolo because that's that's where Barolo is thought to emanate. You're right in the heart of the region. Um, the vineyard sort of runs northeast from the the, the town of Barolo itself, with a, a lovely um, southeastern exposure. And and the, there are a number of zones. I mean, Canubi itself is is the middle zone there, and then you have Canubi. Boschkis, which is the furthest from the, the town, and then some other crew there, um, Muscatel, La Valletta, and San Lorenzo, um, making, making up a sort of a, a greater Canubi region. And there is um, contention as to whether everything is entitled to the name Canubi or, or whether it's just this sort of central area. But nonetheless, prestigious um, vineyard right in the heart of um, the Barolo region. Um, and um, Luciano built up his domain and built up his holdings in in Boschus as well, because uh, by the time he died, he had two and a half hectares there, so quite a nice size um, holding there. And so, as I say, this this vi these vineyards have a southeast exposure um, on a hillside. There's free draining, friable, sandy soil that um, produces quite an elegant style of Nebbiolo. Um, so a very particular style. Um, this wine itself um, is fermented in stainless steel tanks, uh, open stainless steel tanks. Um, fermentation takes place with the, the indigenous yeast, so it's um, entirely uh, done with those yeasts, find their way into the winery on, on the fruit or already in the winery. Um, Aging goes on in French oak, but in 500 litre tonneau, um, of which I assume there's a small degree of new oak. It's not a, a, a major factor. It's not emphasised there. Um, the malactic conversion takes place in those barrels, and the wine then goes on to once bottled to age for two years before release. So, it, with the idea of sort of harmonising everything prior to release, um, the winery suggests that this um, drinking window on this probably isn't until about 2024. So we have a little way to wait. Um, um, but they suggest that you know this would age out for another twenty years after that. So so let's let's see what we make of the wine, shall we? Um, firstly, to say I, I think it's actually got quite a good depth of colour for a Barolo. Um, Nebbiolo is not a variety that that is particularly well known for having deep colour. There's a slight bricky colour to the rim here, but this is a medium ruby red. Um, but it's not dark. I can see through it very easily there. Um, Swelling it, um, the aromas, the aromas are rich and ripe, and and slightly high toned. There's a, uh, a sort of almost a spiritiness, and I mean that in a good way. You know, um, but you you've got a core of sort of licorishiness, um, very ripe dark cherry, perhaps, um, perhaps red cherry notes as well. But also dried fruit, there's a slight sort of raisin sultana note there as well. Um, there are touches of those licorice aniseed notes again, but the, there are touches of other spices as well, probably, probably coming from the oak, maybe a tiny touch of cinnamon, um, nutmeg, that sort of note there. So, so, so quite a complex, um, medium intensity nose. Uh, with plenty going on there. Um, and, and you see, as I ke I've kept swirling it there, there are actually some quite uh, reasonable tears forming on the, the glass there. Um, I mean, the, the label says this is 14.5% alcohol, so that's that's hardly surprising. Um, so let's have a taste. Now, 
that's a very impressive wine. Impressive in a number of ways. Firstly, it obviously has lovely freshness, but it's not mouth-watering or sharp. Um, you know, the freshness is lifting the fruit beautifully, but there's such a concentration of fruit, and the tannins are so finely structured. They're very, it's, it's a wonderful fine-grained tannin, but it's not drying or dusty at all. There's a sort of a chocolatey smooth finish. There's a richness, there's that um, licorice note to a fruit core that's surrounded by more sort of red notes. Um, almost sort of lifted raspberry. There's, I'm talking on the nose about high toned notes. Some of those are ripe, you know, almost uh, dried fruit, sultana, fig, that sort of note. But also, um, you know, lovely, lovely red fruit notes, sort of red cherry, slightly bitter red cherry notes coming through there. Um, all around this sort of lovely anise, anise um, sort of core. Um, the alcohol is giving richness to the finish and that's giving length and weight there. Um, this is medium, maybe medium to full bodied. It's not a huge wine, it's not big and alcoholic. The alcohol isn't hot, although there is a, a warmth, but it's bringing out the spicy um, oak notes. Maybe those are the things that, that maybe that's the thing that, that would settle if you left this another couple of years just to, to make it that little bit more harmonious. Um, but the sort of slight cedar and nutmeg notes at the finish are very attractive along with, you know, as I say, a touch of anise, uh, a licoricey core to the entire wine. Um, just the balance on this is superb and I think the acidity um, it, and, and the fruit are so beautifully matched here and the alcohol despite being really quite powerful doesn't stand out particularly um, so yes a very accomplished wine but um, actually I looked at the pricing on this and uh, this is when when you can get hold of it this this wine is is priced between 75 and 100 US dollars okay that's an X tax price so you might expect to pay slightly more on the shelf but still for the quality of wine you've got here that is an uh, is an excellent price so um well worth trying um i think on the, on the basis of this um real um shame to lose somebody like um, luciano sandroni somebody who can um put such um balance and elegance into a wine and, and combine that with power in this way so uh, thank you for watching i hope you found this interesting and uh, do join us again bye now